Uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to hear your word, O Lord, to, O Lord, allow this word to touch our hearts, O Lord, and our Lord, and our minds, O Lord, my Lord, uh, open up our minds to the correct interpretation and understanding of this word, O Lord, bind all enemies, O Lord, uh, against our confusion, O Lord, please, O Lord, touch our minds, O Lord. Bring us the word back to our remembrance so we can apply it to our daily life, Heavenly Father. Uh, and least of all, Lord, uh, please touch your servant, O Lord. Use me as your instrument to be a blessing to myself and your people. Help me, O Lord. Move me out of the way. Give me, O Lord, the word that you wish me to say. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> Today, our scripture for the message is from the New Testament. In the New Testament, in the book of Mark, Gospel of St. Mark. New Testament, Book of Mark, and Chapter 1. New Testament, Book of Mark, Chapter 1, verses 21 through 27. Mark, Chapter 1, verses 21 through 27. When you find it, say that. And the word from the King James Version reads as such. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he, meaning Jesus, entered into the synagogue and talked. 22. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority, and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone! What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, he cried with a loud voice, and came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they Question amongst themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. Amen. 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 I read to you the book of Mark. Chapter 1, verses 21 to 27. May God have a blessing to the hearing, reading, and doing of this holy word. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> the theme and subject today is a little controversial. Uh, might be a little strong for some of us. Uh, 
with weak hearts and uh, fearful disposition. But the theme today that was given to me is preaching to the devil. Preaching to the devil. And the subject is unclean spirits. Unclean spirits. In today's word, we see Jesus himself teaching in the synagogue or sanctuary. When a man with a demonic or unclean spirit cries out during his sermon, the man was silenced and rebuked by Jesus. And then he called the demonic spirit out of him. The power in this scripture shows us all that we must be prepared when and if we encounter these demonic forces. All right now. All right. All right. For we all live amongst the unclean spirits of this world. And as we see in the scripture today, not even the church is saved. But that situation just confirmed what the Bible says about Paul says in Ephesians 6 and 12, and as Reverend Smith likes to say, I'm in the book so you don't have to look. We wrestle not flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. Peter says in 1 Peter 5 and 8, I'm in the book so you don't have to look. Your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion that walketh about seeking whom he may devour. A demon or unclean spirit is a servant of evil mm -hmm. and a child of Satan. Mm -hmm. And they act just like him. Yeah. They delight in wickedness and lies and try to control and influence your mind, body, and even your financial resources. Your heart and soul and they can be in anyone at any time in any place. But their behavior will always let you know who they really are. Right. And as in the scripture today, they can never hide from Jesus. Right. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in order for us to protect ourselves from the unclean spirits in this world, we must be sober, clear-headed, 
self-disciplined and well-balanced, vigilant, watchful, and cautious at all times. Rightly dividing the word by the hearing, reading, doing, and confessing of the word of God. Being prayerful and faithful to God in order to receive his grace and mercy. For in this world we live in, it is unavoidable that we will encounter demonic forces and unclean spirits and their victims. You see them downtown, if you ever took a walk, day or night, the tormented souls wandering the streets, yelling and screaming to an invisible tormentor, suffering, but there are different degrees of possession from slightly to severe. Sometimes it could be a person who is just a low down, dirty, back slabbing, stabbing, lying, cheating, dirty dog who tries to steal anything that's not nailed down from you. And after which, he throws you away like garbage after he takes everything you got. Up to complete demonic possession of your mind, body, and soul. Demonic spirits are different in that only Jesus himself can cast out demonic forces. We cannot cast out demonic forces by ourselves. Only a man or woman of God at the pinnacle of their faith with the full anointing of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Word of God that can call upon Christ himself in righteous prayer in order to cast out a demonic spirit. Don't try to do battle with demonic spirits by yourself. Say a prayer for that tormented soul and keep on moving baby because the Bible gives an example of this when men try to cast out a demonic spirit from a man I'm in the book so you don't have to look in Acts chapter 19 verses 13 through 16 it says how a rabbi and his seven sons confronted a demonic possessed man. <clears throat> trying to cast it out by saying this. We command you in Jesus' name who Paul preached about <clears throat> to come out of him. The Bible says the demon in the tormented man responded to them saying this, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? He then, the demon, then proceeded to beat all 
eight of them were. Till the Bible says, till they were naked and wounded. Now, I'm a child that was not spared the bill. My family's from the South, Louisiana, and uh, my mother would actually wouldn't just stick to a belt. She would grab the nearest object that she possibly could before I could run. And I've taken a beating or two once in my life, or twice in my life. Three times, I do not. Stop counting after a while. I just said, I don't like him, so I better stop getting. But I have never been beaten so hard that I, my clothes came off. And not only that, was wounded, bruised, and bloody. All right. That was to them and to me, I would assume, by looking was the worst butt whooping they ever received in your life. I'm going to say it again. You come across a demonic spirit, what, say, repeat this, say a prayer and keep on moving. I came here today to tell you that God wants you to cast out the unclean spirits in your life. All right, yeah. The people in your life that tempt you to live in an unclean way. The ones you personally control the choice of allowing them to stay in your life or have them be. And you if you choose to want to cast them out, all you have to do is ask them a few questions. Number one, do you think Jesus is the son of the living God? Ask them this, do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Here's a real good one. Is God real? Do you believe in the Bible? Here's a big one. Do you pray? Do you go to church? And if so, who's your pastor? Does your family and loved ones go to church, or believe in God. And now, then watch their reactions to your questions. By what their answers are, and how they react to your questions, will tell you who they are. Some can't take it when you ask them these questions. And they flee immediately. Some try to lie and fool you into thinking they know Jesus in order to get close to you. But eventually, their actions, words, and deeds will not match Christ. And you then do I call it stage two. You then testify to them about the goodness of Jesus. You tell them how he found you in a pit of sin. A filthy wretch on your way to hell in a hand. How he reached down, picked you up, planted your feet on solid ground. Tell him about when you were in a tunnel of darkness, 
blind, ignorant, and evil. His light shined into that darkness. And he showed you the way to his amazing grace. You have to tell people, he showed me how to walk right. How to talk right. He taught me his word. He showed me how much he loves me. He shows me how much he's done for me. He showed me how he took sin upon himself in a place called the sin. He told me how he was betrayed and lied on. He told me how they whipped him all night long. Then they put a crown of dicky thorns on his head. He told me they made him carry an old rugged cross that he could not carry by himself. He told me they nailed him to this cross and that he hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour. He told me they pierced him in the side till he hung his head and died. He told me they brought him to a borrowed tomb and sealed him in. He told me he stayed there all day Friday and Friday night. He told me he stayed there all day Saturday all right. and Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Then early Sunday morning, he told me he got up out of the grave with the power of God in his hands. He told me that there is a place for me in his kingdom. Forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Oh, I'm closing. I have to say, mm -hmm. if you say those things that I mentioned, like testimony, personal testimony, or testimony about the life of Christ, mm -hmm. that testimony will either draw them closer to you or drive them away. Which is what you want in the first place. I know some people love to be popular. But I learned a long time ago that quality of friends and associates are a lot better than quantity. You don't want nobody in your life trying to pull you back to where Jesus brought you from. Alright. That's it. Thank you. Thank Dr. Tate uh, for this opportunity to uh, share with you the word of God and how he gave it to me. I hope you see some evidence of anointing within the words I've given or presented and some evidence of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Uh, like I said, I'm kind of rusty. Um,